And that was, this was the furthest western extension of the Santa Fe Railroad. It was the end of the line. And that's a picture of it where it was still functioning. This is actually, this is a bit further east. This is on the other side of the Harbor Freeway. And that's what they wanted to turn Playa del Rey into. They wanted to build a rail line along Sentinella Creek and then along Bayona Creek down to the ocean. And this is sort of near where the entrance to Bayona Creek is now, near where Marina del Rey is in Playa del Rey. And they had a plan to build a major port there, dredge it out, and build a residential development on top of this just where it's right there. This is what it actually looked like pretty much at the peak of its development. And there's a lot of interesting pictures. It's really hard to recognize things in this area because all of it's been destroyed. Um, even people charting the rail lines, there apparently there was a funicular that went up the cliff right there behind Playa del Rey. That was a resort. There was a big shooting club out there. Um, but all of this has sort of been destroyed. And now it's the channeled entrance to Bayona Creek and then of course Marina del Rey. And they cut through the sandbar where the houses are to build that because the, one of the train lines went all the way down the beach and essentially went where the entrance to Marina del Rey is across that. So this is Englewood in the 20s and you also can see even as late as the 20s, there's definitely plenty of cars, but Englewood was still a city that was surrounded by a rural area. Um, up until the 1920s, the idea was we're going to have all these small cities, Santa Monica, Culver City, Inglewood, Los Angeles, all connected by trains going through agricultural areas. It was very idyllic. And all through the 1880s and 1890s, Los Angeles was a resort, and they were attracting retirees here. And this was all the doing of the railroad. It had nothing to do with automobiles. You can even see, it's kind of hard to see, but all the way in the corner, up in the upper right, you can see the main road from Los Angeles into Inglewood was not Florence. Florence barely even existed. It was West Boulevard turning into Redondo. Um, you can see all the trains coming in here. There's the Santa Fe line. The Santa Fe line split um, over here off of Florence, which is, I'm going to show you pictures of the train station in a minute. And then one line went up to Santa Monica, the other line went down to Redondo Beach, which was another place that was, they tried to develop as a port. But the line we're going to talk about, you can see here's the Santa Fe line on the north side of Florence. But on the south side of Florence, there's this other line, these other train tracks that go down Market Street, and then where La Brea runs into Market Street right here, and they keep going all the way down. That's the train we're going to talk about next. And that train actually, it's hard to see, but around this big intersection where Redondo meets Florence, that train used to cross and go on the inside of Redondo and then followed it up and was on the other side, on the north side of the Santa Fe tracks and went up to Crenshaw Boulevard. And that is the streetcar. This is two old pictures and this is over where that intersection in the Santa Fe tracks was. That's Buster Keaton on the left. And that's some movie from the 30s on the right. And in both of them, you can see this building right here on the left side. It's just a small little building which doesn't exist anymore. There's a better picture of it. That was the train station. That was the Santa Fe station and also the red car station. And this is, it's a junkyard kind of now. It's over behind the city yard. Um, I'm going to show you another building in a second that it still exists. But it's sort of, if you go over to Florence and Fur, you can see where the track had split right there where the power station is. And the original track that went to Santa Monica went up that way. And the train station was right there. It's called Cable Way, I believe. There's another picture of it in the late 60s. And this picture you can actually see uh, downtown on the left side.
That's the, the only building, as far as I know when we were doing research, this is the only building that's left of this whole system. Um, it was an electrical substation. Uh, they electrified the line when the red cars came in, uh, the Santa Fe line, and they built two substations in Inglewood. This one was built in the 20s, the other one was built much earlier. Um, that one's gone, that one was in the cemetery. And many people have probably driven by this building on Florence and never even noticed it, but this is built early 1920s, one of the oldest buildings in Inglewood. And the train station was right behind it. This is how light rail first came to Inglewood. The Los Angeles and Redondo, back before 1910, all the these little streetcar and train lines in Los Angeles were basically all individually owned. They were different companies, and they were built for different purposes. Um, a lot of them would be built from downtown to, for example, some city that the real estate developer wanted to develop. Um, a lot of the people that came here, interestingly enough, they came here from Phoenix. They got the idea in Phoenix, because um, in Phoenix they had this old, huge open area. They built a rail line out from downtown Phoenix and built it east to Scottsdale. And Henry Huntington, who now has a very big mansion and a library named after him and a botanical garden up in Pasadena and a few streets and a couple, at least uh, two cities named after him. Uh, a man by the name of Van Nuys and Mr. Lancashire and a few other people were all involved in these kind of developments. In places in the southwest, they would buy up these empty areas and build a rail line so people could get back and forth between them. In the 20s, um, they changed their ideas a little bit. Rather than agricultural, it became very industrial. And they would build these rail lines down to factories. There was a huge factory out Firestone, Firestone Boulevard, Firestone the Tire Factory. There were some big factories in Torrance to the refineries. These areas are empty. They would build a factory, build a worker town around it, and they'd have a train line going in and out of downtown Los Angeles. This train line was designed for two reasons, to get to what they thought was going to be the main port down in Redondo Beach. And this thing right here, which is, here it's called Clifton by the Sea. Now I think it's called Hollywood Riviera, where Torrance and parts of the county, there's an unincorporated area along the beach. But you can even see they had all these big piers with these train lines on them. They were expecting Redondo to be much more industrial and more of a port than it became. And they built this line. The first line was um, this one that went down Benita Avenue, which I don't even think exists anymore. The second line was the Englewood line, and then they built this, the Sunnyside Division to go through Gardena. But you can see the line went down here at this time, was King Boulevard was Santa Barbara Avenue, which was a major street, became a major street for the streetcars later on. Uh, it turned down Crenshaw through Hyde Park and then followed along the Santa Fe tracks past the cemetery and then turned, we saw it on the map before, and went all the way down Hawthorne Boulevard, down to the beach. In 1910, they did this thing called the Great Merger, where they took all these different rail lines and they combined them. Um, and it was funny, it was very mercenary the way they divided them. The way this railroad was divided, they cut it at Hawthorne. So basically everything, everything north of this line went to the streetcar, the Los Angeles Railway. Everything south went to the Pacific Electric. And you're going to see that. It's hard to see in this map. This is a famous map. A lot of you may have already seen this map. This is a map that people wave around and they say this is what we tore up and got rid of. Um, I'm not going to get into that. I actually have a different opinion <laughs> than a lot of people, mainly because my family moved here in the 20s, and so my mother actually witnessed the end of this. It, there was less of a conspiracy than the fact that a lot of this rail system was designed for the city that I described earlier. Small cities across an agricultural area connected by the interurban, not a streetcar, an interurban railway, which was the red car. 
it was not designed to go through a metropolitan area, to actually go through the city itself. And they had tremendous problems with traffic because most of these trains ran in the street. So especially between downtown and Hollywood, um, these trains just, they got stuck. They got stuck in traffic like everything else. Um, but it was an amazing system. I think at the time, this is in the 20s, the only city that even came close to rivaling it was Berlin. Because um, you can see those trains went, you could get to San Bernardino all the way down to Newport Beach with no problem. This is sort of a zoom into where Inglewood is. And I'm showing you this because in actuality, Inglewood was not a major stop on the red car. There was one red car line that came to Inglewood. Um, it didn't run very often. It was mostly a tourist train. And it was designed as a tourist train for people to get off of the Santa Fe and get on the red car to go to Venice Beach. Because you can see the only line that came to that train station was followed the old Santa Fe tracks, which they electrified, up to Venice. To actually get to Inglewood, in and out of Inglewood, most of the people took this train right here, which is the one that we're going to talk about. This is the Los Angeles Railway. A lot of people know about the red car and have seen that map. Not as many of know about the Los Angeles Railway, which was the streetcars. And then, of course, there's the Santa Fe and they ran freight trains, and they did run passenger service that stopped in Inglewood. And you can even see right here when they divided up the lines, this is how they divided them up. The Los Angeles Railway stopped here, and the red cars went across and stopped here. That's one of the red cars. That's one going down the beach in Redondo Beach. And this sort of explains, uh, just visually, one of the reasons why the red car disappeared. Because as you can see, this is Redondo Beach. These people that were building these houses down there later on were not going to have a train literally running on the beach. This is a map that fewer people have seen. But to my mind, this was much more important to, to Los Angeles. This was our, our streetcar. Um, people are amazed sometimes when they see this map. They can't believe there were that many trains. If you combine this map, because this was simultaneous with the red cars, if you could think of this map combined with that other map, this was a city where you did not need a car. This was a city that, if you look into the future, this is a city that can survive without gasoline, which you can't say now. All those red lines or trams, the only buses that they had, at the time they did this map, which was in the late 30s, the bus lines are these dotted lines right here. The line that came here, and you see again, this is where they did the split when they merged the rail lines. There's Hawthorne, and went down to Broadway. This is line number five. This was the longest streetcar line in Los Angeles. It started here, down in Hawthorne, came up to Eaglewood, went up Crenshaw, down Santa Barbara Avenue, through downtown, went all the way up here, and came all the way up, and then turned on Colorado Boulevard, right near Eagle Rock, and stopped at Townsend Street in Eagle Rock. It was uh, just under 22 miles. And it ran, I've seen some of the schedules for it, at this point it ran at rush hour, it ran every five minutes. <coughs> So the Crenshaw line itself is not new. This is a, the same map, except <coughs> someone basically made it easier to see. And one thing that you can see about this, you can see the five line. The thing that was unusual about the five is because it was the Los Angeles from Donald Railway, made it a little bit different from a lot of the other um, streetcars. It actually had great, or not great separations, um, street separations. It was separated from the street in many places. And you can see where those places are, where there's black lines, but you can see these sort of hollow lines. Those are places where the streetcar was actually separated from the street, which was unusual. Um, in the United States, we don't have many streetcars left. I did live in San Francisco, which is one of the few places that does. Um, where they have trains that are not only 
uh, not separated from the street, that run down lanes of the street with cars. Um, and all of these streetcars did that, except for these large parts of the five that ran in these medians, either on the side of the street, on Florence, or in the middle. And this is why some of these streets, like King Boulevard, this is Lamert, Crenshaw, this is why these streets are so wide, is because in the middle of the street or on the side there was a double track for a streetcar. And you can also see, this again, this is not a city where you needed to have a car. If you lived anywhere within walking distance of any of these lines right here, you could get around. Well, we'll never have that again, but we'll have something similar. And there, that's what it looked like. That's the Los Angeles Railway. This is La Mert and 43rd over by um, Phelps Barbecue, sort of looking north. Uh, you can see the buildings have a change. The middle of the street's planted with trees. And this is, I believe this is in the mid-50s when these pictures were taken. And then this is a little bit further south. This is where they turned um, off of Crenshaw. And basically where the photographer's standing, the Santa Fe tracks are right behind him. So the streetcar would turn off of Crenshaw, just north of the Santa Fe tracks, so just north of where the, the tracks are going to be um, in the future. Although I believe in this area there's going to be a tunnel. You can also, one thing about this picture I noticed, you can see people were very blasé about the trains. There's a guy just walking right along there. This is another, it's a different kind of car. Um, does anyone know where this is? Yeah, right by the cemetery. The right of way was on the south side of Florence, which is why Florence is so wide in that section between West Boulevard and down to Market Street, because there was this old median on the south side of the street where there was a streetcar, the number five. This is a picture of that substation. I found this kind of by accident. That's a little tiny building in the left-hand corner. They always had problems when they electrified the line um, with the power getting low. And so they built a substation in the cemetery. And they made it look like a little mission. <laughs> there's a photograph of it. I've actually, I'm, I don't know where this is, and I've looked at pictures of the cemetery trying to figure out if, obviously it was near the north side of the cemetery. We thought that it might be where some of the mausoleums are now, but there's graves there, so I don't know if they would have moved those. But anyway, this was somewhere on the north side of the cemetery. And right near there. And there's another picture of the streetcar going by the entrance to the cemetery along Florence. Um, very recently, just by coincidence, a couple days ago, they used this photograph um, in a blog posting and someone took a photograph of a, a metro bus at the same location. Um, the one thing that you notice right away is that the trees have grown. But it's also interesting because the bus, I, I didn't even think about this, the orange buses have a very similar color scheme. This is a little bit further down. This is sort of um, over by Locust. And the reason why there's, there seems like there's a lot of cars, this is probably a race day, because they did run a lot of extra trains when there were races at Hollywood Park. And then this is where the car turned onto Market Street off of Florence. So, not very much of that is left. Yeah, the this, the, I th thought this picture was interesting just because the street looks so wide here. And someone, someone was a little older than me can tell me what year this is, but 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea is showing at the Fox. <laughs> so I think that is 
Fifty-one. Fifty-one. What is it? 1951. I updated that photo. <laughs> 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 and then this is closer to the end of the line down in Hawthorne. Um, I think because there's so many trains, and I don't know because I don't know the buildings, um, but I believe this is either near the track, and again it was track day, so there was a lot of trains for people going to the track. Or it was at, um, in Hawthorne, closer to the end of the line, so they just had a bunch of trains stacked up. But I do think it was for track day, because it doesn't look like Hawthorne. This map is from 1948, after the war, of course. Um, two things happened. Buses. And the real conspiracy, which people don't talk about, which is the freeway. People talk much less about the freeway than, the, than what destroyed the red car. And the construction of the freeway, which you'll find it's not been written about very much. So I'm not going to talk about it, but it's just something of personal interest to me. Um, it was fascinating, the way the freeway was punched through the city. This was the rapid transit plan in 1948. And the thing about it that really amazes me is how close it is to what actually happened. In 1948, this is what they wanted to do. They wanted to make this the rail system. And you can see a lot of the parts of the line. There's a line to Inglewood. There's a line to Long Beach. There's a line to the valley, up Lancashire Boulevard, up over through Coenga. Uh, there's a line out towards Pasadena. There's no freeways in here because in 1948 there was only one freeway. They were planning others. And then you can even see there's sort of there's two trains to the beach. And then this is this is what we have to look forward to at least in the near future. Um, again. We could talk on and on about what the potential, what the future could be, where this is going to develop into. Um, I've heard people suggest, first of all, the Green Line is definitely probably going to go further south, down to Torrance, and maybe further than that to Pedro or all the way to Long Beach. Um, I've heard there's long-range plans that the Crenshaw Line would take up that part of the Green Line, and the Green Line would go north and go up and that would be the train that goes through the west side and goes over into the valley along the 405. But again, these are things that are not being, they're very distantly planned. And most people in this room will not see them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I will. But we will all see this. This is either in construction or in the very, you know, it's, it's all been approved, including the Crenshaw line, which is what we're going to talk about. Um, that goes from the Expo Line down Crenshaw Boulevard, right here along the tracks. And I'm saying this to people because when I was handing out flyers for this up and down the rail line, I was amazed at how few or how many people did not know where exactly the light rail was going to be, or when it was coming, or the fact that they had already started construction. Where did you all stop from? Uh, that train. I mean, again, eventually, and this this would be. Very important. Eventually, this line might go up to West Hollywood, up La Brea, in that direction somewhere. Because the one thing you don't see on this map, you don't see a lot of cross routes. The only real route that goes across is the Green Line. Um, but it starts right here. This is right by the West Angeles Church on Exposition and Crenshaw. So that's going to be where that transfer point is. From there, you can get onto this line. And I don't want to. I really don't want to speak for the Metro. Is, is it true or not? Are they going to rename the lines when they actually build the downtown connector? They, they probably yeah. yeah. The original the original plan years ago was that the blue line would be this train right here, and the gold line would be this train right here. Yeah, yeah this train. So in other words, the fact that they weren't connected right here in the middle, you have to go to Seventh Street and transfer. Once they build the connector right here and connect Union Station to 7th Street, 
Um, this line will go through, and this line will go through, right here. And then you'll just have the blue and the gold line crossing the city. But at that point, then this train, you get into the system right here, and it's going to come down and connect to the green line here. And although some, certainly something we can think about, there's really no fixed plans yet for um, any kind of train into the airport. But the airport finally is, is on board with the idea. So there will be some kind of transfer here. I think they're kind of arguing because the airport's not sure where they want people to check in, whether they want a little train going around the airport, um, which is what you see like in New York and San Francisco and places like that, or if they want to actually have some kind of terminal by the station where people would check in there. But it'll get worked out. And so anyway, thank you. And this is, I can show this to people later if they want to see the sources for the photographs and the maps. And uh, we can also make this uh, slideshow presentation available. Sir, do you know what color the print shop line is going to be? I mean, there's there's yellow, there's green, and there's gold. Like I said, um, when they build the downtown connector, then what is gold and blue is going to change. Yeah. Like for instance, the Expo line doesn't have a color. Um, they decided, I don't know how the purple line was decided on. Right, but so eventually we'll, maybe we'll get to vote on it and pick a color. <laughs> Um, we have two more presentations. I'm glad I did this to give time, people time to show up. Um, we're going to have a presentation from Metro, and um, that's going to talk about what is transit-oriented development, which is not so much the light rail itself, but what happens around the line, especially around the stations. And this is really important because this is why I wanted to do this, because um, a lot of people don't realize what the potential is, um, good or bad. Um, people who live in Highland Park along the uh, Gold Line, people who even live in East LA along the Gold Line, people who definitely who live along the subways, um, are already finding out. I have a question for you. Did I understand you say you passed out flyers to businesses? Yes, sir. In the area? Yes, sir. Why didn't you pass them out to the residents? Uh, because I'm just one person. I have them at the library. We put it on our Facebook page. Um, I walked up and down the line. I do apologize that I could not go to every residence and business, but I was the only person who was available to do it. But only one resident through the whole line is on La Colina between uh, Centinella and Madrid. That's the only residential area there. <coughs> Don't you think the residents of Inglewood should know more about it? I, I see no one from my street but me here. We can talk about it after the meeting. Again, sure. I apologize, but like I said, um, we just didn't have the staff. Yeah, but uh, as there's, a there's, there's, I, that's, that lives here, that's, that's concerned, that you only have 15 houses that's involved in... in okay, we can talk about it after the meeting. Sure. Because I did, I was on Long Coming Yeah, there's... There, there was a lot of businesses that I wasn't able to go to. If it had been my wish, I, every business in Inglewood.
Very nice. Joel, you are invited back to Metro. I'm inviting you myself as one of the best historical overviews of uh, focusing on England, yes, but of how this has came out that I've seen so far. Excellent job. Thank you very much.